Lavrit, good morning, Mr. Minister, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Riga and welcome to this uh, very professional and uh, nice conference of uh, cyber chess. Cybersecurity, as Madam Cynthia Daruma mentioned, is not a game. It is really a serious business, but, and it's becoming more and more topical today. But uh, before you get down to these very serious professional issues, let me shortly still entertain you talking about a game, about my game, about chess, and some principles that um, the chess has been um, giving, uh, given to me and uh, giving to me and that I have uh, used in my professional career uh, in politics and the everyday life. And hopefully, after this day, when you leave the conference, some new ideas will be taken in your heads or in your pockets to make you feel better prepared, more secure for the new cyber um, world. So, um, shortly about me, before I um, got into the politics, I uh, used to be the head of the Ventspils High Technology Park, uh, developing the business, uh, helping also the IT business. And actually, I'm coming from a very small town, Kuldiga, uh, which is famous not only for the, uh, for the widest uh, waterfall in Europe and the wider, widest Cablestone Bridge, but also for uh, a very strong sports school and chess club. So it is a tradition well kept there. And that's how I got involved in chess. But you know, I was very lucky to do that because chess has opened so many doors <laughs> for me in my life. Uh, and um, that has given me this sense that you always have to um, somehow open the new horizons, especially being a woman from a small country, for, from a small town. Um, I always had this feeling that oh, there is some glass ceiling, but it's there not to, not to stop me, but really to be a target, to be pushed through and um, reach the, the, the space. So that's, that, uh, that's been uh, something that has treated my character and that has probably been the reason why I've always been urged to do something strange, something more, something that the others probably do not dare or do not um, even have the idea of uh, like building the first Latvian satellite or afterwards when I used to be the Minister of Economic Affairs, opening the gas, gas market or uh, during my career of being the, the finance minister, um, implementing the, the tax reform. And uh, you know, everything that you have in your mind, you can reach. There is a say, saying that uh, you have to shoot the stars to land the moon. So you can do that, but of course, there are some preconditions for that. For me, uh, one lesson that I've learned, it is that you need the one stable or one focal point. If you've got the one stable point in your life, you can turn the world, uh, world around. For me, it's a family. For, uh, for you, it might be anything else. A very good team of... Uh, colleagues, uh, some principles in your life, belief in something. But if you've got this focal point, then it works. Um, it's always um, about the, the goal, but it, it's much better uh, and easier to reach the goal if you know some tactical elements. And this is something that I've uh, taken uh, um, the chess as my big, big academy in my life. Uh, Chess or shachs or chaturanga, it is a war game. And uh, it, it, it has the, the, the same principles um, uh, of the fight and of defense that might be replicated in all other uh, areas of uh, your life as well. The same is probably the cyber war. Cyber war. It is the blo less bloody way of conflict solving. It doesn't involve much blood today as well but it doesn't mean that it's, it is less damaging. The same as financial crime. It's not, it doesn't involve much blood, but it doesn't, uh, doesn't mean that it's uh, less damaging. Uh, name, uh, take just one example. The, the 11th of September, crashing down two big towers sponsored by the illegal or illicit money flowing through the very secure financial sector. So, uh, 
several principles from my experience that hopefully will be, the, the, will be useful uh, in, in your life. Uh, one question has always been um, asked to me, what is more important for a sports, sport, sportsman? Is it a, ta is it a, uh, is it a talent? Or is it a, the ability to work? And the answer is, at least, at least it's my answer, the biggest talent, it is really the ability to work hard. You have to earn your success. There is a chess goddess, Kaisa is her name. And I, I am, I, something that I've uh, understood uh, over these years, that yes, sports, also business, also politics, is a very jealous, or your profession, is a very jealous uh, lady. You have to devote 100% of your time, of your revenue, energy, of your, uh, of your passion to become a champion, to become the best in your profession. And you have to work hard. But which is the, and, and if you fail to do that, the Kaisa in chess, but the goddesses of your profession will do, do the same, will turn the back to you. But which is the good side of the story, it works also vice versa. If you do maximum, maximum of, 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 uh, of uh, the abilities that you also uh, have at that point, you will somehow happen to be in the right time, in the right place, suddenly meet the people who would uh, help you, and everything will happen. You will have earned and deserved your success. So preparation. Preparation is of vital importance. So there is a saying that the, the, the more, more difficult it is in your training, the better or easier it will be in, at, at, at war. Uh, so in chess, um, you know that the information is uh, the, the wealth uh, and the most important thing. And you always know before you prepare for your, for, for, for your game that you do have all the information about your opponent and you know that your opponent does have all the information on you. So you're always trying to find the weaknesses in your opponent's game, whether it's the lack of some ta tactical skills or the opening weaknesses, or uh, you, you're trying to understand whether he or she likes the, the, the aggressive games or more, more um, uh, positional ones. But sometimes, you know, it is really so that you are, uh, you are fighting against a much stronger opponent and there are no visible weaknesses. So a tactical element that has worked for me, it is then, or, and, and, and it has turned out to be the best preparation, it's, it is not really to find the, the very weak uh, uh, weakness of the opponent, it is getting rid of your own weaknesses. So that is why there is this saying that uh, your strength is not the million strong sides of you, but the ability to find and get rid of your weaknesses. So, uh, and uh, this element that I've used quite often is then, in these cases, that I cannot really find any weaknesses in, in, in my opponent. It is really to reconsider where has been my weak points in the last games or in the last uh, period, and then preparing I call it a Trojan horse. Knowing that the opponent is coming for my weaknesses, I do prepare either some new variation in my opening, either some new trick, and sitting and waiting so that they come from, for, for, for the weaknesses. And it works, especially with the chess uh, ladies. <laughs> but in the, all the others, uh, other areas, I, I, I think it's the same. Uh, Sportsmen are always quite uh, superstitious. <laughs> and I, uh, why is it so? Because uh, we do understand that uh, you know, the highest uh, level is, the more even and equal the skills and the talent levels and abilities are, because everybody, if you go to the World Championship or Olympiad, you know that these are the people your opponents, your competitors. These are the people who have um, spent hours and hours in the training rooms, sweating, 
over uh, taking or, or doing more than they can, you know that uh, only, uh, only those persons become the champions who at the moment when your physical body says that, oh, I cannot do anymore, and your brain wants to uh, get relaxed and somehow uh, pamper you and telling that, stop, I cannot do anymore, they do a little, but still more. So, and you know that you have to work or, or, or fight uh, against the people having these qualities. So what uh, does have the role at that, at that point it is your motivation. It is something that gives you the self-confidence during the game or during the tournament, during the very moment of the competition. So for each and every person, it's something different. Either it's the strong sense of patriotism that gives you this motivation. For example, for me, it always helps that I sit uh, by, the, by the chessboard. And before I start a game, a game I always find the, the Latvian flag that does remind me that I'm here not to play a game, but to represent my country. It helps also that I choose the same pen for the, the, the each game. It helps me that I choose the, the same winning route, walking to the playing uh, game. It helps me also that if I have lost the game, I always take and put on the same clothes. You know, there is this principle that oh, I, if there is a winning shirt, I never change it. I, I have the, the totally opposite uh, method that I always change the clothes and if, I, if I've if i lost, then I put it once again so that it uh, the, the, the shirt has the revenge. <laughs> so, but that, that's, that's all about the tricks. It doesn't matter what the tricks are, but it does matter that you need the self-confidence, you need to find the motivation, you need to understand why and for what you are fighting for, or sometimes defending for. Uh, it is about the, the decision-making. So how do you make the decisions? First, it is very important to make the decisions, not to be only the process-oriented, <laughs> but the target-oriented. Uh, I do have this theory dividing the whole Europe into two different types. One is the, the wine drinking countries, which are normally the more process oriented, and then there is the beer drinking countries that are the, the result oriented uh, people. So the good side of the story is that we are the beer drinking country. So poss possibly or potentially still having the target uh, uh, as the main, main, uh, main uh, or this result as the main, main target. So uh, it is important to take the decisions, but first, uh, first you have to analyze, you have to uh, calculate, you have to lean on your general principles and the intuition, because the intuition is formed of your pre previous ex experience, and then you make the move. And before you make the move, sit on your hands and th think twice. Sometimes it is also worth, before you make your move, before you make your position, uh, make, your, make your decision, to switch the sides. Physically, if you are playing the chess game, it also helps if you stand up, walk behind the back of your opponent, and look at the same position, at the same situation or context from the opponent's side. It totally changes the, the perspective. You are somehow getting in the opponent's shoes and see something that probably from your uh, own shoes you would never had an imagine, imagined. So switching the sides, an easy trick, but it helps. Smart use of resources. First, of course, uh, one thing that um, sport does teach you is that it is that uh, a very simple principle that together we are stronger. It's just, you know, I like this example that if you are uh, a one person, you're like a single finger, you can press the button, you can uh, write an SMS, you can uh, do uh, an easy stuff like pointing to some, something, but if there are five fingers, you are suddenly able to make a strong fist that is also much stronger if you need to defend yourself. So there is a real strength in the teamwork. And it's much smarter if you know how to use your team, not 
letting or not forcing the people that are probably better salespersons to put them on the production line and vice versa. Ask your team, what are the goals in their life? What do they really want for themselves? And if you are able to respond to their needs, they will be following you, they will be su supporting you, helping you, and strengthening you. Before you start some fight, um, and also if you defend, if you are on the defense side, you have to really eva be evaluate how big the, 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 the capacities, how big the resources you've got. Before starting your attack, you have to uh, understand how big the frontier you should open, not to open too wide the, the game so that you are not able to defend your position. Because in chess there is one tactical element that, that works quite strongly, especially if you are the attacking side. You are attacking one flank, and while all the opponent's forces are taken to defend the weakness, you are maneuvering your, your pieces to, uh, to the other, other flank, and the, the opponent, the defending side, is not able to reroute their, their, their pieces back uh, so, so quickly. So it's the principle of two weaknesses. And especially if you are the defending side, you also have to keep in mind that now if there is an attack on one point, you shouldn't take all your resources to this one point. You have to distribute your forces keeping the whole frontier strong. So that is why there's also the saying that, uh, that, that, uh, that, that, that sometimes the threat is, more, more, is stronger than its execution. Yeah, so I make the threat, there's no intention to attack really, but it's a threat so that you get your forces concentrated in one spot and then re make the real, real attack um, uh, that was envisaged already. So, uh, Strategy and tactics. <laughs> there, is a, there is, of course, a, 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 a presumption that chess is a strategic game. Actually, 99% of chess, it is, about the, it is about tactics. Yes, it is always important to have the plan, which is your strategy, but then it's all about how you're implementing the plan. Uh, uh, but one thing that, uh, that my chess trainer has uh, taught me already since my childhood that you always have to play secure with the draw in your pocket. Yes, it works, but not in the cases, and that's already something that I've learned myself, not in the cases if you are playing against a much stronger opponent. Then if you are choosing the very secure way, you would just be lost. If you're playing against much, a much stronger opponent, then it's always, at least in chess, worth to make or to take the risk. Then at least you do have the, 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 the chance. Uh, either it's a very dynamic position uh, that the opponent would not probably be uh, getting oriented uh, as good as you are, but, uh, or, or there will just be the luck that, that, that you have somehow deserved before, but then there is, the, there is the chance. And you always have to analyze your mistakes. And the real champions, they do learn not only from the lost games, they do, do look for the mistakes also in the win, uh, winning games. Why? Because there is no game that has been won without any mistake, that has been played without any mistake. It's just there is a saying that the one that, that, that is the winner, it is the one who is making the, 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 the mistake the last but one. So he was not the, the last who made the mistake. So they are always the mistakes. And you know, that's also something that my, my chess coach taught to me, that uh, he was always angry that I lost, uh, that I won a game that was actually lost, that I had made a mistake in, but some, somehow I was lucky and I, I, and I won. And I couldn't understand, why is he angry? I just won the game. But he always wanted to me the, to lose the game that I've, I had spoiled before, so that not to think that you can, uh, you know, not to work too hard and then still have the, 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 the winning uh, position and w one game. So uh, 
that is why I'm probably not uh, so unhappy that the greener farmers just lost in the, <laughs> in the elections. That will give the lesson, lesson, lesson to us. Um, the ability to be brave is of vital, vital importance. And you know, everybody knows that streaming uh, along the stream, that's uh, not okay. Quite often people think that streaming against the stream is cool. But this is not something that I be believe in. Uh, that's yes, that's uh, revolutionary. That would, uh, that would um, get a lot of attention to you. But in most cases, it is still a very destructive process. So much smarter might be not to stream along the, not, not to swim along the stream, not to go against it, but to make your own way. And that's the big uh, opportunity to take the, 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 the people follow you. That is the big opportunity to countries like Lat Latvia find their niche in the global world of ec economics and geopolitics if we find our way, not just all the time concentrate on fighting against something, but being more productive. It's like the informative warfare where somehow probably too much trying to counter fight the, uh, the, the, the false uh, information, uh, fighting against the messages that are coming from our big brother. But it might be more, much more useful if we would concentrate more on creating our own contents, creating our own message, conveying it in a very attractive way so that people would hear that. And that would be filled in their heads, in their hearts, in their souls, so that there is no space for misinformation coming from somewhere. Just think about that. And it's always about the emotions. Emotions are probably the only quality, the whole spectrum of emotions, is probably the only quality that the human beings are still prevailing the computers, prevailing the machines. And uh, you know, this is also something that the, the coach has taught me in, in my childhood. Ah, you should keep the distance from your opponent. You should uh, play an objective game, concentrating on, the, the, uh, on your position and the, the, the pieces. This is something that I never learned, <laughs> but I'm very happy that I didn't, because that is something that I love about chess. It is the human being's interaction. It is something, uh, some process where I, I really play against the opponent. And uh, it is a process of uh, getting uh, uh, getting your opponent known. It is really thinking about he or she as the human being. Uh, that is the way how I can really predict their mistakes. That is how I can probably find the, the weakest points. And that is actually something that we have to understand. We are not playing against the bytes or computers. We are actually playing against or with the people sitting behind those. It is, of course, uh, to find your unique cocktail for the success. But one final thing that I would remind you, and that chess and sports in general teaches very well, that it is worse to follow the fair play principles. Sports were a tournament or business, or politics, or life in general, it is not a sprint. It is really a marathon. And uh, I do believe in the principle of energy conservation. The thing that you give to the world, it always comes back. So let it be the fair play principles that we follow so that we deserve the success and we can reach the goals others are only thinking of. Thank you.